so okay i think we're all together now uh there may be one or two that join us as we go i'll just let them in and they can just um drop in wherever we're at um so we would just like to welcome you all welcome to this um beautiful workshop and meditation um healing through feeling um my name is guinevere and, and i'm this, liz and this is liz and uh, we're both co-founders of colors of love which uh, for those of you that know um, and those of you that don't it's a very special um, platform for connection creation and celebration which manifests itself currently in a in a once year festival which is very soon next um, in March and it also oh hello welcome another another Ruby May hello <laughs> <laughs> is that Ruby we have here? Yeah. Ruby, can you hear me? Another Ruby May, how wonderful. Yeah. Can you so hear I me, hear Ruby? Don't get triggered, Ruby. <laughs> I can't hear her. <laughs> is it someone stalking me? Possibly. <laughs> I'm not Ruby sure. Ruby May is also a porn star, I think on the internet so <laughs> i'm not sure we're gonna just mute uh ruby ruby welcome um and um yes yeah, so so colors of love is a really special gathering that comes together once a year in thailand and also in different places around the world as one day events and it also is home to a really wonderful and um, ever-growing community of dreamers and believers that are looking to better their uh, life and also share their dreams in the world to create a better world for us all. Um, so it's really, really, really lovely to have quite a few of our Colours of Love community here and lots of new faces as well. It's really wonderful to connect with you and, um, and we're all calling in from all over the world. So really fantastic. Um, so we we felt really inspired to, to run this event um, and invite, I'd just like to welcome straight away Ruby May, the only, the one and only Ruby May, and Jamie Cato, who you'll see here on your screen. And if you haven't yet got gallery view, you may wish, wish to switch to gallery view. For any of you that joined after that instruction, in the top right hand corner, you should be able to switch to gallery view, and then you can see everybody's face at the same time. And welcome, Ruth. Hi, Ruth. Welcome. Um, Hi, hi. Nice to have you with us. We're just introducing ourselves. Um, my name's Guinevere, this is Liz, and we have Ruby and Jamie, our co-hosts today. Um, so I'd just like to hand you over to Liz to explain why we felt inspired to, to bring this gathering together, what's been going on in Australia, and why we felt so impassioned um, to bring you all here today. Hi, guys. Thanks for joining us. It's 6 a.m. in the morning, so forgive us if we're a little bit slow. Uh, the sun is not rising. It's raining here, which is amazing news. And it's also... We're in Australia. Well, we're in we Australia. We're calling we're from, in Australia. From, from Australia. And we've been in one a torrential storm overnight, which is a blessing. And so we're very, very grateful. We came to Australia with the intention to host an event in Sydney, part of our city series. And the climate quickly changed and it became quite terrifying being in Sydney every day. It was constantly cloudy, your eyes were, smoky eyes were burning and you couldn't breathe and you couldn't ever escape the smell of smoke and it just got worse and worse and worse. And so we became really aware of, okay, we're in a situation here in Australia and that situation spread really fast. We ended up coming to Byron Bay with the intention that we would move our event up there and still didn't line up for us energetically. And so we came to the decision together that we have a global community and we are blessed by that community and we wanted to mobilize everybody to come together and support each other through times in the world that are changing really fast. You know, it's not just in Australia we see this problem, it's everywhere now. And we wanted to do something to help those Australians, of course, me being an Australian growing up here, and also just bring awareness to the situation that we are in in the world at the moment where we're in uncertain times. And with that, we wanted to help our community and we wanted to bring together a, a strong unit of people, i.e. 
Ruby May and Jamie Caddo to give us some tools to deal with feeling through these uncertain times. So with that, we're going to donate the funds from this Zoom call and the one we did before and until we stop fundraising to the people in Australia, the Victorian firefighters and also the Wildlife Victoria who haven't received as much funding as the New South Wales have from celebrities and so forth. So any little bit counts and we're really grateful to have you here. So thank you for joining and thank you for supporting a big cause and thank you for supporting yourself by showing up here. Yeah, and I'd just like to also welcome Amanda who's just jumped on. And uh, Amanda, welcome. Um, hi, can you hear us okay? I think she probably can. Amanda, if you'd like to switch on your video at any time, it would be really lovely to see your face. You're welcome to. If you don't want to, that's fine. Um, yeah, so so we um, welcome Ruby and Jamie. Um, we These two are two of my favourite uh, facilitators and mentors, especially when it comes to working with the shadow. And when I um, talk about the shadow and in this context, uh, we recognize that there is a lot of difficult emotions that are coming up around the changes that we are seeing in the world, whether that is, uh, is another friend just chopping in, um, whether that is climate change, whether that is war, whether that is political um, situations. And there's a lot of grief, there's a lot of frustration, there's a lot of anger, uh, there's a lot of sadness, and, and often a feeling of helplessness that are coming up for, for myself, for people that I know. And Jamie and Ruby are two of the most amazing shadow workers that are able to help explore these more difficult aspects of self, more difficult emotions, and, and help us find a peace with them and a way to use them in a beneficial way rather than allow them to become non-beneficial for us. So with that, I'd like to say thank you um, to both of them for being here today. Um, and welcome, Anya, by the way. If you'd like to switch on your video at any time, you're welcome. And um, now I'm going to hand over to Ruby and Jamie for the rest of this session. Um, enjoy, everyone, and uh, feel free to go deep and get connected. And thank you for being here. Welcome, Ruby. Thank you. Thank you. So before we dive in, I would love to invite us all just to take oh, a breath. We logged on a little bit before this call and it was a bit sort of exciting because of these massive rainstorms happening in Australia and uh, yeah, and we're going to kind of enter a slightly different pace and a different way of being together now. Slow down a little bit. So just inviting you to sit comfortably. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, my name is Ruby and I am about two hours outside of Berlin in a little place called Schönfeld. And um, yeah, I feel really excited to share this time with you. I feel excited because like you, I'm confronted with all manner of disturbing uh, and worrying and anxiety inducing and yeah, all these bits of news that we're confronted with or ways in which these disasters are personally affecting us. and. Um, it gives me hope to come together in such a beautiful way. And it gives me hope as well because it feels like we're not just raising money, which is wonderful, but raising money is kind of soothing the symptoms of what's been going on. And it feels like by coming together in this way and really taking time to feel and taking time to connect and, and sort of uh, become more human together we're going deeper than addressing the symptoms and and one view that I find really powerful is that a lot of what's happening in the world um, that's causing such dysfunction and destruction is to do with with a lack of relating a lack of connection 
Um, and so in this call, we're going to take time through meditation to come into feeling and you might have strong feelings or you might realize that it's hard to access feelings and that's really part of the journey is just to recognize and honor whatever it is that we're experiencing and I think collectively we have a really difficult relationship with feeling I don't know about you but I often struggle to make the time to feel deeply or I often struggle to feel as deeply as I know I can because of the sense of busyness and overstimulation and numbness and all these different things that prevent us from feeling. And I think there's something very powerful about coming together in community um, because there's certain things that are also too big to feel. The immensity of what's been happening in Australia, I think perhaps there's certain things that we really require us to come together and kind of create a larger vessel and that's this call is a bit of an experiment and a sort of noble attempt uh, to do that so thank you for taking time out on your friday night or friday morning wherever you are in the world um, for this for this purpose um, and i'm going to hand over to jamie mr Cato. Hey there, everybody. <sighs> what grace it is that we get with this technology to gather like this and join together our positive intentions. It's a well-known fact in quantum physics <laughs> that uh, when we gather in our generosity and mix it all together, we get more than just 20 people's worth we get an exponential number of magnetism for the intentions we're putting out. And it's, it's great to have a, like a team this evening to send out as much positive energy in our own way. Mm. The part of the energy of this evening is um, like we've been talking to raise money and support. And another part of it is to address or to just snorkel a little bit around the edges of the fact of how overwhelming this experience has been with Australia and what's going on in the whole world. But Australia right now is a great big forerunner of where our attention is. And there's a kind of an overwhelm and a sense of powerlessness often, or even numbing out um, to the immensity of that many animals dying and the immensity of that much ignorance being allowed to run free and create such havoc, let alone the out of control environmental factors that we're all trying to understand and all trying to plan for and positively affect. It's a lot, it's a lot. We've, we've almost normalized it. That's what's also crazy is that all these different extraordinary things are going on all over the world, not only environmentally, but politically and just like insane rising of the right and all these things. And we're, we've kind of on some small level normalized it. And a huge part of this accumulation is because as us as a culture, even us beautiful, enlightened people, we are not very um, good at immediately feeling our uncomfortable feelings. We've lived a whole life in a culture that has trained us to get a headache, take a pill. And whenever we have an experience or a sensation that doesn't feel nice, we think something's wrong. We've got to get something to get rid of that or get a session or run to an addiction like Facebook or the fridge or whatever. And this constant turning away from our uncomfortable feelings, like in this case, grief, maybe a little bit in Australia or anger, you know, some of these feelings that we've been culturally told to not express and not be seen in, they accumulate and they accumulate to a point where we start feeling a lot of discomfort and we start losing our power to be strong activists in whatever way we want to help. And a, a bigger metaphor for that is like the accumulation of ignorance and lack of care and correct values in the handling of the land of Australia has accumulated and accumulated and accumulated into this huge explosion. So I'm hoping that all of our collective intention this evening can do something to sort of just like somehow release some of the accumulated pressure energy that we all feel as individuals and that Australia as a land is feeling while it burns and and for me and also for ruby you know we've been working together one of our cornerstones of the stuff we like to work with 
is 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 a concept of turning towards instead of turning away it's a real con cornerstone that while so much is turned away from no i don't want to feel that no i don't want to think about this oh i can't do it i'm powerless there's so much turning away especially when it's uncomfortable feelings we're not very accustomed to when we feel an uncomfortable feeling to deliberately turn towards it and feel it fully and be interested and be welcoming and it's quite counterintuitive to do that with discomfort and yet it's the only thing that really allows us to self-love to self-care is to allow to really be with what is and when we can be with what is in us we can then be great activists and be empathic and be with what's going on in you or with other people and together in community so it's all about turning towards and what we'd like to start with this evening or this morning wherever you are is a kind of a meditation a little journey into our insights to be super willing to feel so that we can all as activists and as helpers and just as beings that want to make a positive in impact say i am a human who's willing to feel some of my uncomfortable feelings and i hope as you hear me say that, that that lands in you, you ask yourself that question, am I a human who's willing to feel some of that edge uh, in, in the name of lessening the accumulation in myself, in my community, and in this case, Australia and in the world? Willingness to feel so that as it's felt, it can be released. And it doesn't have to be released through some big cathartic crying or shouting, just the very feeling of it our body's genius as individuals and as a group will recalibrate that pressure and that overwhelm. So we're going to take a little walk through our insides. We're going to use a thing which we call full body listening, where we're so intimate with our insides. We're so willing to feel everything on the inside that we would never abandon ourselves and run to an addiction instead of feeling a feeling. And to feel where in the body is it? and to go deeper into the total, almost being a wine taster of it, the exact opposite of running away and of corking and suppressing, the exact opposite. So we're gonna go into that now, um, and it's gonna involve closing our eyes and going on a little journey through the inside of our body. And I'm just gonna take us through a few stages of that before handing back to Ruby. So if everybody feels ready, Let's just all close our eyes so that we can go totally internal. Ruby, I'm assuming when I do that screen share thing that I'll still be able to talk over the music, the music audio share, one, my voice still works too. Guess we're about to find out. So everybody closing your eyes and just get comfortable and just feel what it feels like to be breathing. Not doing anything clever with the breath. Just noticing I'm breathing in, noticing I'm breathing out. This is our go-to in emergency break glass whenever we're in a pickle. Every spiritual practice, every culture, every system includes coming back to the breath for a good reason. It's our reset to come back to presence. So just noticing you're breathing in noticing your breathing out and just tuning into that feeling of being you that feeling of being you yourself that feeling you've had of being you that you've had since being a small child that same feeling of being you yourself when you contact that essence of being you yourself just say a little hello to yourself welcome yourself into this little gathering the real essence of you we allow the muscles and our face and around our eyes to soften and gradually turn the corners of our lips up at the sides so that we turn our mouth into a kind of a smile shape, even if you have to slightly put it there. And just as you allow your face to smile, you might feel this flicker of just simple kindness that lives inside you. Just connect to that simple sense of kindness and goodwill that lives inside you that is actually really who you are and we allow it to enter the breath. So now we're inhaling the kind smile, exhaling the kind smile, creating like a lovely smile tide in and out with your kind smile in your breath. <sighs> 
every out breath a little bit more softening, the jaw going soft, the neck going soft, just yielding and allowing the current of life to be there in us, not needing to generate anything, just softly yin, listening, curious, gentle. And you'll notice that as we're breathing through our face right now, you can move the sense of breathing, like the sense of having nostrils anywhere on your body. So for instance, we could allow the sense of breathing to drift down from our face, down our front to a point in the middle of our chest and take a breath as if we're inhaling from a point in the middle of our chest now, filling up the torso with a kind smile. From a point in the middle of the chest. You may feel some warmth or some response inside your torso as you breathe in from there. You can even allow the sense of breathing to drift even lower, letting it go all the way down. Let your tummy go totally limp and soft. Let go of all your yoga locks. And now breathe in as if you're breathing in from your belly. You can fill up the whole belly with a kind smile. You may even feel some warmth in there. We're going to take a little walk through the inside of our body, like a radar from the top of our head, like a 3D imaging radar moving with our breath from our crown down through our body very slowly. We're going to take a journey from our crown like a 3D radar of breath, feeling all the things we're feeling. That's all we're doing, just noticing what feels what. Does anything feel strong? Does anything feel weak? Does anything feel blocked? Does anything feel numb? Or does it feel anything at all? We're just going to look out for those kind of feelings as we go down, not do anything with them, not analyze them, just doing a little inventory from the crown of our head as we walk gently down through the body like a flat surface of water, like a radar from the crown of the head going down. So as you're breathing your kind smiling breath, and it's the kind smiling breath that lights up the 3D image of the feelings, you're just gonna start at the top of the head, bringing your attention to the top of the head and take a breath around your crown. And just notice how it feels there if you can place your attention there. And don't worry if you don't feel anything or even if you don't feel anything throughout this whole thing. We're just making ourselves available for feelings if they want to be felt, whether they be emotions or sensations or temperature. Placing our attention at the crown of the head, we're going to slowly go downwards and just feel everything on the way. How do your skull plates feel? Are they relaxed? Are they stiff? and your forehead and the muscles in your forehead. How does it feel there? Just noticing. And your temples. And all the way through in the middle of the brain, just feel that whole area and just notice how it all feels. Anything strong or anything weak, anything blocked or anything numb, anything at all. Just notice how it feels going down very gradually. Your eye sockets, all the muscles inside them, how do they feel? And the jawbone, the jaw joint, can that soften? How does that feel? The back of the skull. The top vertebrae as it touches the skull. How does it feel around there? Nice breath into that place. Even lower, the teeth, cheekbones, the inside of the mouth, the tongue. And the throat and the next vertebrae around the back of the neck. Down even lower to the hollow of the neck, tops of the shoulders. How do they feel? 
those bones at the top of the shoulders, collarbone, the vertebrae as the neck meets the spine at the back, going lower, a 3D radar as we breathe, the kind smiling breath, just curious and welcoming, that's our attitude, not doing anything heavy, just with a very curious, welcoming attitude for our parts and our feelings and our sensations. Down a bit lower, the heart inside there, this incredible machine, this incredible organ with its valves and arteries and chambers. Feeling how the heart feels and the ribs around it. And noticing the area behind the heart that's a place our tension and breath, the kind smiling breath behind the heart, between the heart and the spine. There's sometimes some tenderness in there. And going even lower, the liver, the lowest ribs, the liver, this incredible machine regulating the other organs, detoxing the whole system. Grateful for having a working liver. And the kidneys round the back next to the spine, purifying all the liquids. Thank God for having working kidneys. And the vertebrae around the back, one by one, feeling a softness and an opening, just breathing, anything strong, anything blocked, anything achy, anything numb. Just noticing how the spine feels around that area. Staying internal, just noticing how everything feels. Any emotions, temperature, gas, tension. Just noticing anything, going down even further, the tummy, letting the tummy be as soft as it's ever been. And the other hardware and intestines and organs going on in there. All doing amazing jobs. Noticing how it all feels. And the lower back. A sense of support or lack of support in the lower back. How does that feel? Oh, and the hips, the amazing ball joints in the hips, and your bladder and your genitals, your inner thighs, allowing spaciousness to be felt, and your buttocks and outer thighs. Just feeling anything strong or blocked or numb, anything at all, just noticing it. Really being with our insides a bit lower, sinking the radar down through the thighs. Down to your incredible knees, these phenomenal multi-directional shock absorbing springy devices. The front of the knees, the back of the knees, all the stuff inside the knees. Breathing gently down through the calf muscle, the shin bone. How does that feel? The ankle joint. Just staying with our insides through the feet and all the bones of the feet. Down through the sole of the foot to the floor. just to etch this beautiful habit in our minds of being internal so that we can self care and know how we feel and meet our needs. We're gonna do one more pass from the crown of the head. So let's bring our attention all the way back up to the top again. With a lovely kind smiling breath and this lovely curious attitude, just really being with ourselves and our inside feelings. Starting at the crown of the head again, just breathing gently, feeling your skull, 
Noticing all the skull plates, breathing as you breathe and your forehead muscles. How does it feel? Anything strong or blocked or anything at all around the back of the skull? And that groove at the back when it meets the spine, is there any tension there? Allowing everything to soften and open as we have our smile, kind, kind smiling breath. Down through the eye sockets, Letting everything soften, temples and the cheekbones. And the joint of the jaw, which often holds tension, how much softer can it be? And the inside of the mouth and the gums and the teeth and the larynx. The throat. Noticing how it all feels, the vertebrae at the back of the neck, the muscles around those vertebrae, could they be softer? Everything letting go as we go past with a nice smiling wave and a wink through the throat and the upper shoulders, the kissy part where the neck meets the shoulder. And the vertebrae around the back getting lower between the shoulder blades. The front of the vertebrae, the back of the vertebrae. The discs in between the vertebrae. And now we're back to the heart again. This wonderful, wonderful beating machine. Keeping all the things pulsing and pulsing and pulsing. Pulsing our life. And as I always ask to just a quick hello to the space behind the heart, between the heart and the spine, that lovely area, that beautiful tender place. Allowing any feelings, even if they're emotional, just allowing that to be welcome. Allowing it all to be welcome because it's who we are. Down through the ribs, getting lower past the liver, the kidneys around the back, feeling that middle area. Feeling the love of having this amazing body and the feelings inside it. Down through the belly and the organs around there, the lower back. Feeling that lower back supported, not supported, strong, weak, open, closed. How does the lower back feel? Every out breath softening, releasing through the hips and the bladder and the genitals and the inner thighs, everything spacious, nothing holding on, noticing anything strong or blocked or resistant. Down through the thighs the long femur bone to your incredible knees. Down through the calves and the ankles. And all the bones of the feet, the toes into the ground. Beautiful, staying internal and just really feeling your whole body, feeling how internal and present you are. I want you to feel your whole skin now as if it's breathing, the whole skin envelope, as if as you breathe in, you're breathing through the whole of the outside surface of your body. Feeling your whole body and as you exhale, softening even more. We'll take two more breaths like that, breathing as our whole surface skin envelope through all the pores at once and letting go, releasing. We'll do one more of those. Breathing all the way in through our whole surface, our whole body as one unit. And exhaling. 
Thank you. And now I'd like you to bring your attention to your skeleton, this extraordinary scaffolding. And it also, all the bones make all the blood from the inside. It's an incredible system. And this time when we breathe, I want you to imagine that your whole skeleton is held together by elastic, like a kid's toy. And as we breathe in, we're gonna feel every single bone of the skeleton very slightly part and all the space between them. Release any pressure or tension like So breathing in, feeling the whole skeleton part and any tension being released between the bones and as you exhale, all of it sitting back together again perfectly. Once again, as we inhale, feeling your whole skeleton, every bone very slightly part and release any tension or pressure. And as you exhale, very gently feeling the whole skeleton fitting beautifully back together again. One more of those, just breathing in, feeling the whole skeleton parting and leaving space. Any tension between the bones, wisps of little smoke blowing away in the breeze. So the breeze blows through the spaces and then we exhale. Ah, and it all fits beautifully back together. So we're so beautifully internal now, we're gonna take it to one deeper level. Just staying with yourself safely, knowing that you can feel all your feelings. I want you now to recall the fires and the traumas that have been going on in Australia recently and now. I want you to connect to your connection to that disaster, to that trauma, to that event. Whatever your relationship is to it, I want you to connect, whether it be to the animals, the uncountable amount of animals that have died and been terrified running for their lives, or the homes that have been burnt, the families that have been displaced or the ignorance, the anger at the prime minister or the other people that have been complicit. There's grief or whatever you feel that you connect to when you think of Australia. I want you to feel where in your body does it wake up? Where in your body says hello when you think of that? It might be in your heart or your belly or your head. Just notice as we're so internal, where are you feeling that feeling wake up in you? And I'd like you to just turn towards it very beautifully and welcomingly and curiously. And just place the softness of your palm of your hand on that place in your body. Wherever you feel that feeling, whether it be anger or grief or anxiety or whatever it is, wherever you feel your connection to that, just place your hand there and allow the smiling breath, instead of going through the whole body now, to just be around that that shape of that feeling. Notice where in the body that feeling is and just allow the radar now to pass through it and and light up its shape with your kind smiling breath. Really willing to feel that feeling. Really noticing what shape it is. And the smiling breath lights it up like a shape, like an MRI radar. As you look at it, what shape exactly is it as you look at it right now? Keeping breathing with it. And what you, what color is it if you're looking at that shape, that feeling? What color is it if it had a color right now? What color is it? Really staying with it, willingly, with curiosity and welcome. Lovely welcoming attitude. And what texture is it, that lump of feeling? Is it hard, is it soft, is it smoky, is it sandy? What consistency is it?
And what flavor is it if you were tasting it? Take a little taste of that feeling now, willingly, out of curiosity. What does it taste like? One more time, we'll ask those questions, breathing into that feeling, it may have moved. So to stay really with it, ask again, where now is that feeling? If you can still locate it. And you may move your palm if you want. Has it moved? Where is it right now? And what shape is it as the 3D smiling breath goes through it? What exact 3D shape is this feeling? And what color is it if we look at it right now as if for the first time? What color is it right now? You may feel it changing as the body recalibrates the blockings. And what texture is it? Hmm. And what taste is it? What flavor if you let yourself taste it? Beautiful. It may have moved, it may have dissolved, it may be in process. We're gonna stay with it one level deeper now. And we're actually gonna ask it some questions as if it has a mouth, as if it has a character, as if it has things to share with us. And we're going to ask questions without trying to come up with answers. We're going to ask it some questions in a very yin way where we just ask the question and let it hang and see if anything comes back without us having to solve or generate anything. Just going to ask the questions into the void, connecting to this feeling. The first question we're going to ask is, what has my relationship to this disaster taught me about myself? Has this experience of connecting to Australia recently, what has it shown me about myself that I need to see? Just see if anything comes back. What has this experience shown me about myself? The next question we ask, the same feeling, thanking the feeling, welcoming the feeling as a little character that lives in us. How is what happened a reminder for me to self-care in some way? Has there been any reminder through this whole experience for me to self-care in any kind of a way, look after myself in some way? Thank you. And the third question we ask the feeling is, how is what's happening an invitation for me to show up more, be more vocal, be more honest, be more authentic, maybe vulnerable? How is what's happening an invitation for me to show up more, be more honest or vocal? And then the last question we ask before we thank this little feeling and give it a cuddle 
is through all of this experience and how we feel right now, what are the gifts I can share with others? What are the gifts or lessons I can share with others? Beautiful. Just doing this together conjures up so much good juice, so much good medicine that we've conjured here together. So beautiful. Last of all, I'd like us to now, I want you to connect to Australia, connect to someone or something or a group or anything you like in Australia that you would like to send a good blast of this lovely medicine we've conjured up, this lovely, cooling, watery, quenching medicine. I want you to connect to that person or place or the whole of Australia. And I want you to imagine a superconducting cable, a line which is connecting us with them. It's this amazing cable that can take a whole river of this lovely energy down it if it wants. And I'd like you to feel it connecting very securely over there in Australia, wherever you like. And connecting very securely here with us. Super connection here, super connection there. And we're going to send a beautiful Niagara Falls of cooling, watery, loving, healing energy from us to them. Whenever you feel ready to do that, let's all do that now. See it have its transformational effect in your mind's eye. That's the magic. See it heal, rejuvenate, cool, quench, whatever feels good. And last of all, I want you to connect to the unfinished or unhealed part in you yourself that connects to Australia, that connects to what's gone on, the unfinished grief, the unfinished rage, anything in you feels like it needs to be Connect it. that beautiful room of energy go back between us and them between them between us
So with your eyes still closed, just inviting you to become aware of the space around you. And as you expand your awareness, expand your awareness to embrace the presence of these other beating hearts and beautiful beings who've joined this call tonight, this morning. All these beings who've whose paths have led them to be right here, right now. Everyone with a different relationship to the world and to their emotions. And yet all here sharing this intention to come together and feel. I'm going to invite you to just experiment a little bit with your kind of inner world and the outer world, opening your eyes for a moment to behold the faces before you. And just Taking a moment to also marvel at how, how beautiful it is that somehow there are these faces and beings that are far away and yet by seeing them, it's like I'm taking that information and it's coming inside my body. So all of these beings, all of these faces are also existing within me. So welcome back and thank you, Jamie. And for the remainder of this call, we would love to come into a slightly more intimate sharing together. And to do that, we're gonna come into little groups. So maybe you'll be in a group with someone that you know, or maybe it will be a complete stranger on the other side of the world. And uh, the invitation is to just very simply share what's alive in you. Could be a reflection of what you experienced during the meditation. Could also be a slightly broader sharing. How do you relate to your emotions? How have you been relating to what's been happening in Australia? How has it affected you? And so each person will get a chance to share and be listened to. It's less of a chit chat and more each person has a time to really be witnessed and heard. Um, and maybe that's really familiar to you to share and be transparent and vulnerable, or maybe that's really beyond your comfort zone uh, and new. So it's up to you what you share, how deeply you share, but the invitation is, is to be courageous. See what it's like just to be transparent and reveal what's there. And just one more thing before we do that, I think it can be quite tempting sometimes or we can fall into a tendency to question our experience or to judge our experience, because we have ideas as to how we should feel or what something should be like. Oh, I should have felt more. Oh, it should have felt different. 
and again like you know we're here because we're practicing relating we're practicing loving what is and so if you had an experience where you came into contact with a difficulty feeling or you noticed yourself getting distracted a lot or you noticed yourself in your head and unable to really feel your body the magic happens when we really honor our experience as it was and then we start from there so i'm going to invite guinevere our technical queen in a short moment to push a magic button and then we will all be transported into little groups of let's do four for those whose microphone doesn't work you can still listen and then you can use the chat I think to um, the chat function to share. If for whatever reason you don't want to join a group, you don't have to because you'll get an invitation and you can either click on it or you can not click on it and then you can just entertain yourself for 15 minutes and then be magically transported back into our final round where we'll close together. Um, so Guinevere, how is it looking your end? It's looking good. We've got three groups of four and two groups of three. That's great. Okay. So then I would say we take, what's the time now? Six past, five past. Yeah. So we'll take 15 minutes and you'll be your own timekeepers. So the groups of four, that means we'll do 16 minutes. So you'll have four. Okay, welcome back everybody. So we don't have heaps of time left, but it would be really lovely just to hear from a few people if you feel inspired, if you want to share something in the larger group just before we close. Um, just something that touched you, something you discovered, a moment you appreciated something you were confronted by it doesn't always have to be something positive it could be anything that you feel would be yeah or value to share in the wider round so we'll just have maybe yeah two or three people if there is anyone you can unmute yourself Danielle? Hi, hi hey. everybody. Good morning from Oregon. Um, I will say just really quickly that I was really surprised at how fast all the helplessness and like really strong feelings of like fire in the throat and in the heart and just all the stuff that I know we've all been dealing with, how quickly it flipped into empowerment and gratitude just almost I feel like being by just being allowed to be in my own body and check in with everything that's been happening and so I just want to thank everybody so much for the space mm. to do this and huge for me Beautiful. I'm glad we all have each other mm. thank you so much Danielle mm. Anyone else? Um, yeah, I just, as I said in the group, um, I have actually lived in Australia and I have witnessed a, a big fire in 2003 where people died. So I was re-traumatized this time, but now because I actually got sick and I had to stay home and I was crying for several days and couldn't go to the toilet. But I feel like this fire, as I said in the group, when there has been a fire, the life which is left has to focus and concentrate. Mm -hmm. And this is the lesson I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing in my life right now. I'm kind of focusing. Like, I don't say yes to new friendships because I do have what I need. So it had really taught me a kind of a rebirth and and when you have a fire as i said the plants who are left the animals who are left really have to focus in order to stay alive so um i i, I feel that now 
Um, but yeah, I had this really, really big sickness because of it. And uh, yeah, it's tough. Mm. And was it a good experience for you, Christina? Was it good to, to come together this way? Yeah, I can feel that I'm hiding a little bit. <laughs> yeah, this is this is my personality. Like I'm not really easy going with just, you know, it was a, a barrier that I kind of closed down my my um, my screen. Mm. But uh I, I feel uh, love that we are doing it. And um, it's it's just me, like mm. you know, <laughs> I, I'm not really that easy with with giving myself out to new people. But I, I really really enjoy uh, what you did, and I, I felt this, you know, you do energy work in this way, and uh, and personally because I, I work with therapy, um, I think this whole subject of eco grief and extinction grief, it's just, you know, yeah, it's something we have to understand how we, 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 we work with it because mm -hmm. it's real. It's, it's really real now. Yes. Thank yeah. You. Thank you. Mm. Maybe one last person, if there is someone. <sighs> or not, and that's also okay. Yeah. Yeah, as Christina said, I think regardless of whether our lives have personally been affected by a tragedy like fire, terms like eco-grief and extinction grief are be going to become part of our vocabulary in the future. And uh, I think it's so important that we come together to practice feeling and holding each other and feeling our web of support. I feel like by doing this, we also really transform our ideas of what intelligence is, that we've been taught that intelligence is something that lives in our heads and is to do with our minds. And if we're living in up in our minds, it's like, okay, that has a particular quality, a particular strength, but it's always a little bit disconnected from the world. And it's only one form of intelligence. And it's like our bodies and our capacity to feel and, and relate is this whole other world of intelligence that our, our emotions are guiding us. They're like a compass pointing us to like what we truly deeply care about and the injustice in the world. And, um, and I think that the, yeah, the culture that we come from is so far removed from that and the collective traumas that have created the numbness and, and the, the struggle to feel, I think it really involves practice um, and it involves support and coming together. And it's just really beautiful to practice today with you and to, feel the web all around the globe uh, of beings who've showed up. So thank you so much. Um, thank you for also your donations. I think that Guinevere, you want to say something else about that? Yeah, go for it. Thank you so much for hosting, for your wonderful idea to put this together. Despite the wind howling and the storm raging outside. <laughs> So, I mean, I would like to say to you all that the prayers from around the world must be very strong. <laughs> because Aust Australia is being battered by rain right now in so many places. Huge storms. We are living on a houseboat this week. And since we got on the boat, uh, it has not stopped raining pretty much. We did a call uh, last night for us. And the moment the call 
finished, the rain started, and 12 hours later, it is still raging. We've actually run aground on the boat because the storms were so strong. Uh, and we are watching some of the strongest rain I've ever seen in my life outside. <laughs> so this is, this is good news. Um, so I'd just like to firstly say thank you so much to Ruby and to Jamie for holding us in this place and for allowing us the space to really feel into those aspects of self and with each other. And, and also thank you to all of you for coming here and being part of this and sharing your vulnerability with each other. Um, it's, really, it's really important that as we move through this world and the different experiences that are coming up, the different changes that we're going to see, that we create these spaces to share with each other, to hold each other, to support each other, and to allow each other to be vulnerable and, and to make each other feel safe to do so, because there's going to be a lot of healing that comes through that, and there may be a lot of healing needed as you move through these uncertain times. And really the beauty and the love and the solidarity and the compassion and the community and the friendship and the family, and the family that we find as human beings on earth is in these moments. So even though we're just on a computer screen right now, we're all very special humans from around the world that came together to share this moment. And that is just one drop in the huge rain of love that we can face on this planet. So I'm just going to hand you over to Liz to, to share at the end any intentions and any thanks you'd like to do. Thank you all for showing up in support of yourselves and in support of each other mostly and also in support of Australia and the world and the betterment of humanity. The best we can do is watch our language, be deliberate with how we speak and keep raising our vibration so that can ripple out to those who need it the most. As we go through a time of uncertainty, we all have each other as we proved to each other last night and this morning and constantly through the container that is Colours of Love and we're lucky to have Jamie blessing us this year in Thailand. He'll be sharing his magic with our community in the real, real. So if any of you feel inclined to join us, I know a lot of you here will be, but if you feel inclined, Jamie will be there sharing more of his tools, techniques and magic to keep helping us evolve throughout these wild, wild times. It's a wild time to be alive. And it's, it's a better time to be alive when we know we have all of you guys. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. And if any of you feel inclined to make a donation to our fundraiser, um, that would be so wonderful. And when we get off the call, we'll be sending you an email, just a quick recap, um, so we can stay in touch. It will be coming from our Colours of Love email, and it will just give you again the links so that you can um, stay in touch with us and um, with each other. And also, if you want to make a donation to our fundraising for the wildlife here in Australia, that would be so wonderful. Um, but otherwise, I'd like to just say thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Ruby. Thank you to all of you wonderful people for joining us.